What's up guys, it's Johnny O here with another How To Tuesday for you and today we're going to look at WMI and PowerShell. So let's start with WMI. What is it? Uh, it stands for Windows Management Instrumentation and it's a Windows Management Utility uh, for managing remote and local computers. Uh, WMI is natively available in any Windows computer from Windows ME and up. Today I want to take a quick look at the git wmi object commandlet in PowerShell and see some of the power that wmi gives us through PowerShell. So using git wmi object we can specify a class which will return data about the computer relevant to that class. Uh, we'll get more into these classes in just a moment. Uh, they are based on the CMI common uh, information model schema. Uh, so I think that's enough base information. Let's go ahead and look at wmi in action. So I'm going to go ahead and launch PowerShell as administrator, and once you have that done, you should see that it's set to uh, the root directory of Windows System 32, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the git hyphen wmi uh, object, and what you can do here is do a hyphen list, press enter, and you'll see every one of the classes that is associated with a WMI object. Uh, now you can see that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of data to try and get through. Um, so what I want to do here is just take a look at a couple of the WMI objects uh, classes that we can use here. Uh, but first, let's see how we can narrow this down. Well, with the WMI object, the most common one that you're going to run into, the most common one you're going to want to use is going to be one of these Win32 uh, classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our command again git hyphen wmi which by the way in powershell you do have tab completion uh, so if you just hit tab once you get to there it'll auto complete with the next object in line that matches uh, that text so we're going to do the hyphen list again then we're going to pipe into and if you're not familiar with that check out my past uh, powershell videos i explained to you what piping is and how to do it uh, but we're going to pipe that to question mark which is basically just going to tell PowerShell we want to do a query and we're going to do a curly brace we're going to do dollar underscore dot name and again if you don't know what this dollar underscore does I explained that in a previous PowerShell how to Tuesday uh, so go check that out and then pop back into this I'll put a link for it in the, descri or in the description and in a card up here for you uh, so we're going to do hyphen match because we want to match with win 32. Right, so you want that in quotation marks because we're trying to search for a string. And press enter. And you'll see we get everything that begins with Win32. It's still a very long list, but it helps you narrow it down. You kind of scroll through this and look for something that maybe is, you know, something you might need. But what I'm going to do instead of searching through this, I'm going to just go ahead and give you a couple of the, the um, WMI classes or Win32 classes that I find useful. Uh, so the first one, again, we're going to do our git wmi tab autocomplete is win32 underscore bios. So this is going to provide a few key pieces, information, key pieces of information about your computer bios. So you see here it tells me what my bios version is, the manufacturer of my motherboard, um, the name of, you know, the name will be usually like a name of either something that the computer uh, manufacturer has named uh, like a, a model num or model name or something like that for the motherboard and this is just default system BIOS is giving you a name of the BIOS uh, serial number to be filled by OEM is because it's a custom built PC version Alaska uh, 10 2009 so that's probably has something to do with um, like manufacturing or something like that so if you're using something like a um, like an HP laptop, this would you know give you the BIOS version. Manufacturer would be Hewlett Packard or HP, uh, more than likely HP, and it would have an actual serial number, the serial number that is attached to the actual device. So let's say you're writing a script in PowerShell for the company you work for, and you need to collect the serial number for the device, and you know be able to throw that somewhere in a database, something like that. Well, if you need to just get the serial number, what we can do is do an open parentheses git wmi object and we're going to do our win32 underscore bios close the parentheses and we're going to do a dot serial number 
and that will return to you just the value in the serial number field. Again, it doesn't work too good with my PC because it's a custom build, so there's no serial number stored in the BIOS uh, by default, but if you have a pre-built PC, either desktop or laptop, it will have uh, a value stored there. So another thing we can do is we can do git event object uh, when 32 underscore computer system uh, and then we'll go ahead and press enter and you'll see kind of self-explanatory again gets computer system information so it'll pull what domain the computer is a part of uh, so in my case because it's a personal PC and I don't have a, a network set up a domain set up on my home network it's just in the work group uh, manufacturer again this is the motherboard manufacturer because I have an MSI motherboard the model is the model number attached to my uh, motherboard itself which is MS-7834 which is the MSI Tomahawk AM4 motherboard uh, name is going to be your computer name primary owner name is the name that you entered in when you first installed Windows uh, where it's like you know uh, as for uh, I think a name and an organization or a company name uh, so it's going to be the primary owner name it's going to be that username that you put in in the beginning and then total physical memory, which is going to be how much RAM you have installed. I have 16 gigabytes, uh, so it gives it to you here in bytes. Okay, so normally with a pre-built PC, again, this is a custom-built PC, but with a pre-built um, HP or Dell, like you would see in the workplace, the manufacturer would be, again, like HP or Dell or something like that, and then the model name would actually be the explicit model name of the computer, what, how they name it. So like with Lenovo, it's actually, uh, I forget how many, it's like a 12 or 16 digit string of letters and numbers. Um, with HP, it is a very explicit like HP Elite 1030 G2, like really long, ridiculous string of characters. And with Dell, it's usually something like Latitude E6430. Um, but this can be helpful uh, whenever you're trying to do something like a deployment with Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Uh, for a set of PCs and you want to be able to um, create a folder structure for your drivers that allows you to have um, MDT pick from the correct set of drivers based on this model number stored in the BIOS because what it can do is actually say okay I see the computer that just connected to me uh, I'm going to do a WMI call to it and find out what its model name is okay this is a you know, Latitude E6430 let me check and see do I have logic to tell me where to find those drivers at and you can put that in there so that MDT can actually find that and pull the exact drivers without having to search through every single driver that's stored on the server uh, which saves time on the deployment as well as keeping uh, you know weird issues where say it's a Hazel chipset and it tries to load an Ivy Bridge chipset driver and then that would cause system not to boot you avoid issues like that alright so I've rambled on about that enough but again, we can do the same thing that we did before where we did for the serial number. And we just come in here and change this to uh, computer, oops, computer system. Oh my goodness, can't type. Uh, computer system, and we're gonna just change this to model, and then you see we get the same information there. Um, so just a couple other things that you can do uh, to get useful information about the system. Uh, would be Win32 disk drive and that will list all the physical disks on the drive and what their uh, capacity is, what the size of the drive is. Um, you can do logical disk I believe is another one if I remember correctly which will actually give you the volume, uh, how much free space is on it, what the full size of it is and so that can be useful um, so you can actually you know if you need to be able to say uh, as a system administrator run a PowerShell script across the network and then be able to see okay how much free space left on the drive what's the total space and do take some action on say if um, free space is less than 15 percent of available space then you know prompt uh, schedule a dis, uh, defrag or prompt user to contact IT something like that and you can have it kick back to your server and then have that tell uh, the server to spit off an email to notify the user, you know, or notify uh, even better the help desk to contact the user to help them clean up their disk, stuff like that. Um, let's see, I believe also the other thing you can do as well, again, volume, that'll just give you extremely detailed information about the, uh, each volume on the drive, or on the, uh, on the computer. You can do network adapter, that'll give you specific network adapter information. You can even do uh, Win32 underscore process, which will actually give you every process that's currently active on the machine. You can see it's an extensive list, yet again. 
But again, what we can do is open parentheses, go to the end. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, not open parentheses. That's not what I want to do. Uh, what we can do is pipe it out to a query. So we're going to do our question mark, our open curly brace. Uh, so you can do dollar underscore uh, dot name and say like. And we're going to do an open quote, uh, an asterisk, because we want it to be a wild card. So we may not know exactly what the process name is, but uh, Chrome. Good chance there's going to be something running with that in it. And you'll see it'll give you, again, very detailed information um, about each process instance for Chrome. So we have one right here, starts with the uh, genus and goes all the way down to path right here. So you can see we've got one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. I mean, this goes on for a while. Seven, I have a bunch of uh, Chrome tabs open, so it's probably going to be one for each tab or so. So you see, we can get detailed information about it. Uh, you could, you know, use this in a script to be able to pull this information, um, and then grab the specific line for, say, the path to the application. If you say, uh, I don't know, you, you know of a specific executable that may be running on the, on the machines that you want to get rid of, uh, that can give you information you need to be able to easily do that. Um, so that's just a few things that you can do with uh, Git WMI object in PowerShell, and use this to help you. Uh, you know, collect information, monitor, and even uh, modify machines either locally or even on the network. Um, one thing I will leave you with is if you want to do anything on a remote computer, I don't have anything on my network perhaps to do this, but you can specify, uh, you'll see computer name. So if you do computer name, you can either put in the IP address, you know, 192.168.1. Uh, whatever it happens to be. Or you can do the actual host name. Um, so, you know, like mine are all just the generic names that, that um, Windows gives you when you uh, do a new um, new image on a machine. So it's going to be, you know, desktop and some gibberish. Um, but whatever the computer name is, you can put that in there and tell it to do the action. Basically, what that tells PowerShell is okay, look at the network for a computer by this name or a computer at this IP address and go ahead and take whatever action or acrylic or whatever data I'm requesting from that machine. Alright guys, so I'm going to go and wrap this up. Uh, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, hit a like on that video if you liked it. Go ahead and hit this like if you didn't. Leave me, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, if there are any other PowerShell videos that you guys want to see or any other how-to videos at all uh, on anything tech or IT related, even gaming related, uh, you know, I'll, I'll look at it, and if it's something that I know about or that I can learn, <laughs> I'll definitely make a video guy, for you guys showing you how to do that. Uh, don't forget to check out links down in my description uh, for my Patreon page. You can follow me on Twitter at TitoTechTube. And until next time, guys, it's Johnny O signing off.